Let's do a fireside chat with Dennis fucking Prager. Okay? Prager you versus poor people. Let's go, okay? Let's actually do this one. Look at him. Look at him over here. Being a white. Definitely super white. It's gonna be great. I do love his dog, though. I would die for his dog. Chat. Let's name his dog, okay? What's his dog? What's his dog's name? Look at this white. He is very white. Even his hair is white. His hair went full Aryan on him. I like that. Hoover? Hoover the dog? Poopers? Cuco? Blondie? These just sound like baseball, uh, like 1920s baseball nicknames. Lamongus? Philip? Jowl? His name's Andrew Jackson. <laughs> Grunley? Sausage? Oh, God. Quite. Wyatt. Uh, damn, Jake, you probably sh shouldn't just stream Predator. It's against TOS. The movie Predator? I, I... I like that movie. I don't know I don't know what the joke is in there. Is, does he have dreadlocks and he's killing people from trees? I don't really understand. Walter, Scud, Earl. Uh... The name, the name of the dog is also Dennis Prager. Penis Prager. Paschetti. Big Papa. Wow, Evotion. Oh no. Okay, that's that's the one. The dog's name is Black because Dennis Prager would like to own one. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay, I have an answer. You're gonna be on camera for sure. Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. Please don't step on the cords. If you fuck that up, I will punch you in the face. Luckily, it'll be off stream because she will have disconnected me from the internet. I mean, I seriously will punch her to smithereens, though. Just battered. Just, this is cute as fuck. Why, 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 that's fine. It's very simple. Made out of, it's made out of, like, a... Um, it was either mithril or adamantine. I'm pretty sure it's mithril. It's very, very thin. Uh, and it's just like a metal thing. And it has like a little thing. And then the, the right in the middle is the family crest. Just oh, so an owl. Like stuff in the middle. Yeah, but it's like, it's, it's, it's not supposed to be super ornate. It's just, it's yeah, like, it's, it's ancient. Hi, buddy. How do we do puppos? How do we do puppos? Oh, we just do it like normal. Okay. That's fine. We'll just do it like normal. Hi. Okay. Now when I do stuff, I've been sitting here. He sits behind me because there's a carpet down here now. Oh, very cute. All right, let's give what's you... The, what's the oopsie level of, of me being upset? The oopsie level? Right here. <laughs> the like door frame? No, the door frame's not on camera. Uh, no, I know, but the door the door in general is like pretty much... Do Dogo to honor the fallen Dogo. You don't have to shut the door. Oh, well, yeah, but I like Darwin and Ellie being able to come in. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Dennis Prager, this is the Fireside Chat. That's the Fireside. I'm the chat. Is, is, is he, is his mic the fucking webcam he's using? Huh. I do respect the fact that he has the body confidence to show his entire body on camera, though. I don't. I don't. I just look like a lump. He's old, though. Once I'm old, I don't think I'll care, right? I mean, I don't necessarily care. It's just more of like I don't like to look at it, so. Thank you for explaining why it's a fireside chat. Absolutely. Should I... Guys, should I get this? Should I get rock this look? This, this purple thing? This purple dad look? With the shoulder pads? Should I get on this train with the pleats? Chat, that's the dog. How is he doing? That's Otto. I, arguably, as I have said in the past, but I should say this slow, I don't want him to hear it. Get a little conceited. He might be the best known dog in America today. The Not best, only America, around the world. The best known dog? Does he say is the... Wait, did he just say the, the dog's name is Otto? Isn't that a fucking Nazi name? Auto. Auto Nazi. If I type in auto Nazi. Auto Skorzny. Austrian born SS Obersturmbannführer. 
In 1931, Skorzny joined the Austrian Nazi organization and soon became a member of the Nazi SA, a charismatic figure. Skorzny, so he named his dog after a Nazi. That's, that's unofficial facts, okay? Unofficial facts. Does anyone hate their pet? No. We, I just looked now. We got questions from all over the world, from Africa and from the Middle East, from the Caribbean. Uh, anyway, that's Otto, who's... Wait, wait, wait. He thinks that... His internet show makes his dog super popular around the world because people in Africa and the Caribbean have access to this show? What? <laughs> yeah. And other brown places, true. Yeah, okay. All right. It's cute when old people are like, well, he must be popular all over the world. I don't know why they're fucking... I don't, I don't know why they're... Uh, Pinocchio, but I guess that's the case. Who's very special, but everybody thinks their dog is special. Isn't that the truth? I guess to a certain extent, I guess everybody's dog is special. Although I'm telling you, I want to do an hour of radio once. Okay. Uh, because I, I love to talk about everything. I'm, I'm going to ask people to call in if they, if they hate their pet. I, I had a friend. I have a friend. Is this real life? Is this uh, what we're talking about dog. right now? The, the, he's still living, thank Is God. Is this just but we turn on the fucking... Dog, we turn it on and let the old guy ramble? Loved his wife. But but they, they really they really right. disliked each other. It's very funny, actually. I wonder how common that is at all in the world. Where Luckily, we have a timer to know how much longer our suffering lasts. What have you. It's over. Anyway, uh, this is just uh, you and me having a chance to talk about life. Whatever's on my mind, what, uh, and I take questions from you, and it's it's a very wonderful experience. Should I get a timer, I, chat? I just want to remind you, by the way, that <laughs> really none of these are dated. So if you go back to episode 17, uh -huh. it'll be just as worthwhile. I, don't, I, I, I raise I, issues that are You know what? I agree. If you go to episode 17 of Dennis Prager's Fireside Chat, it will be just as worthwhile as it is now. Exactly as worthwhile as it is right now. Are just really, really worth. Uh, I believe if I'm allowed to say that about my own ideas. But look, I have to say it about my own ideas. Let's let's be honest. If I didn't think I had something important to say, wouldn't I be a fool for for taking up your time? Anyway, you wouldn't spend the time. So that that's that's the other. This guy thing. just fucking anyway, get over it. Oh my god. Now, I want to just remind you, before we begin, I am delighted to tell you that today's episode of the Fireside Chat is sponsored by Colorado Christian University. I'm sure that's a CCU wonderful university. CCU Online has partnered with PragerU to offer adults. De yeah. I'm going to skip over his, uh, his thing and talk to you guys. Dennis calls his show Fireside Chats because he's so old that he was alive when FDR was still around. When you're so old, you have friends that were in iron lungs? You should be dead. You should be, maybe not killed, but just like I think, from like a from like a co like a cosmic level, fate should have ended you by this point, right? But it hasn't. He's still alive. He's still cooking. Still going. Love the copy in the background. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna have probably. I have a green screen. I don't know what we're gonna do. We're either gonna decorate it with your shit. Uh, maybe have a picture up there. I don't know. We're, we, I don't know what's gonna happen. This guy done yet? I see the timer is still not out yet. Yikes. Even death don't want to spend time with Dennis. That's true. Fill out the form and receive more information. You'll get connected with an enrollment counselor who can help put together a degree plan that fits your schedule. All right, Dennis. Okay, everybody. So He's got notes. Thoughts. That's way more preparation than I have. Today, on something I read today in the New York Times. All right. And I'm going to start tweeting. <coughs> I have been very remiss in that arena. And I, I know why I hesitate, because I don't, I'm not incendiary, and I'm not saying everybody who tweets is incendiary, but I, I'm very careful with words. Are you? And so, before I send out a tweet, I want to be very okay. careful. You're, you're somewhat limited in space, so you can't develop an idea. In other words, it runs I'm against, quick in certain ways, it runs against my nature to do that. But I, I think it's important. So here is something I read in the New York Times today. So listen to this. All right. 
it the was failing. The, the reason Times. I read it, it, it was a very sad little headline. It was like, it was the physical edition, like page 10 or something. And I think the headline was uh, man shoots waiter in, in, in Paris uh, or, in, or in France because the waiter. Uh, this is on one and a half times speed right now. And this is what we're listening to. Wow. Um, took too much time. Which and, and that really is the case. That's what happened. The guy got so angry at him, and, and also the guy's carrying a gun. I mean, which is pretty rare in in, in uh, Europe, but he was carrying a gun. Shot the waiter dead because he got angry at him for for uh, what he thought was taking too long to deliver the food. So I was interested in this because it, it's just such a an, a bizarre and sad thing. But then I came across this line. Listen to this. Okay. So uh, an article in today's New York Times on a man who shot and killed a waiter in Paris describes, quote, this is what the article describes, the Saint-Denis Saint uh, Department, the, the, it's like a region area, uh, how, how French cities are divided. It's a on region the outskirts area. Of Paris, where poor social conditions have often led to crimes and social unrest. And then it continued with the article. Poor social con conditions. Okay, so they have a history of poor social condi conditions leading to, okay. What's what's wrong with providing context for the area? If, if okay, so if it was Flint, Michigan, if they wrote an article, right, and it was like it was like for a broader audience, and like there was a shooting today in Flint, Michigan, Flint, which has a history of violent shootings, and then continues, what? Of course, listening to this guy talk is like, I don't know, it's 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 kind of like watching watching the wall, but hearing hearing words come out of it um, makes me feel fucking crazy. Imagine, imagine turning this on. When, when does he? Are these live? Like, does he do these live? Like, does it have a? It does have a. It, it is live. What the fuck? Wait, how is it live? Okay, so it must not be. It must be. It must be premiered. There's no way he does these live because of these these uh, these timers. But uh, yeah, wow. Crime is caused by moral poverty. Got him, John. John nailed it. Wow, what a good guy. This, was, this is one of those moments, it's a giveaway, as to the left-right difference in the world. The, the New York Times is on the left. So the writer of the article takes it as a given that if there is crime, it's because of poor social conditions. So I'm writing in my tweet, that in a nutshell is one of the major differences between the left and the right. <laughs> on the left, they believe poverty causes crime. On the right, we believe crime causes poverty. And you're wrong. Crime does not cause poverty. I mean, it can cause poverty poverty right but like that's to say that crime that exists regardless at the same rate crime exists regardless of of uh your economic status and that's just patently untrue more crime occurs in poor neighborhoods like crime statistics poverty boom i'll bring it over here uh, correlation between crime rate and poverty. Let's see. Poverty is a parent of crime. Even Aristotle fucking knew this. Jesus Christ. Like, like, of course it does. Um. Uh, uh, uh. Arlington. Ooh, Arlington, Virginia is nice. Bump, 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 bump. I, I don't know what a story map. Just give me a fucking study, my guy. Let's do the statistics. I don't know. I don't want to go through your fucking infographics. People living in households in the U.S. that have an income level below the federal poverty threshold more than double the rates of violent victimization compared to individuals in high income households. Are we surprised that this is the case? Are we surprised that this is the case? What happens when you have a low income level? What's the number one thing that happens right away? Okay, with everybody. What do you think is the number one, like, like, effect of being poor. Just immediately. Obviously, obviously it's not, it's not just <laughs> being poor and not being able to pay for things. Like, that's, that's an obvious thing. But, like, what do you think happens to a household? It's under stress. It's under economic stress immediately. You have, you have people in stressful situations. If anyone has ever actually been poor, I have. Uh, you know that, that being poor has a lot of, of stressors with it, like day to day, literally day to day. Like, I don't, where am I going to get my next meal? 
where am I, like, how am I going to pay for gas to get to school? How am I, well, I hope I can get to my job. You know what I mean? Um, there's a lot of these things that happen. So if you're already stressed out, your rate of, of violence is definitely going to tend upward, right? Individuals who live in poverty are more likely to report a crime than those who do not live in poverty, but more than half of all crime is believed to go unreported by local law enforcement. So uh, if you live in poverty, you're more likely to report a crime than those who do not live in poverty. This is twofold, right? Um, you're more likely to report a crime twofold. Uh, I think rich people um, tend to, um, <laughs> well... The types of crimes they're seeing are different, right? So a white person, a white person, that was a slip. A white person crime, white collar crime. Um, <laughs> because I imagine, I imagine a, a waspy couple, um, you know, they're in bed by 10. They wake up at seven. You know what I mean? Like, like the types of crime they're seeing are like people skimming off the top of the account. You know what I mean? They're not necessarily seeing, like, someone steal a TV. Whereas in poor neighborhoods, we live in a, we live in a you know, lower middle class neighborhood. Um, my car got broken into and several other cars got broken into, um, like, last year. I think last winter? Um, and they were just stealing shit out of people's cars. Like, whatever was valuable. This is the second time my uh, car has been uh, broken into. Another time it was... Uh, uh, a little bit down the way. Both times, it was just poor people looking for something to sell. They stole, like, CDs. And like, that's how long ago it was the last time my car got broken into. Both times, I left the damn thing unlocked like an idiot. Um, so, actually, I actually think the second time it was Sarah's fault. <laughs> she left the car unlocked. But uh, either way, it wasn't a big deal. I didn't really care. Um, uh, but the first time was definitely my fault. And, um... Yeah, I mean, they're just trying to find something that they can fucking hawk at the pawn shop so they can make ends meet, man. It's, it, like, it's just poor people. It's it's just different. And um, half of all crime is believed to go unreported by local law enforcement. There's no, it's not surprising that people don't report crimes. Do you know why? No one fucking trusts the police. And I don't blame them. When people live in a household that are struggling with poverty, they also have a higher rate of violence that involves a firearm at 3.5 per 1,000 people compared to 0.8 or uh, to 2.5 per 1,000 people in middle to high-income families. Uh, this also makes a lot of sense. Um, there'd be higher rates of gun ownership in, in cases where it was out more often in a poor um, place because you'd be more likely to need a firearm if you are poor, um, and you'd also be more likely to um, not be as educated. Uh, Jake's the one with the keys 99% of the time. That's true. It, it, definitely, it definitely was your fault last time. but. Uh, um, I remember it being your fault, um, but it wasn't a big deal. I didn't really care. Uh, anyway, uh, for both whites and blacks slash African Americans in the U S the overall pattern of being in poverty with the highest rates of victimization was consistent for Hispanics and Latinos. Violent victimization is relatively equal across all income levels. Okay. Hispanics in the U S who are living in poverty have nearly half the rates of violent victimization when compared to poor whites even poor blacks slash African Americans have a lower rate of violent victimization in poverty compared to whites. Um, so this this uh, spits in the face of black on black crime narratives. Um, urban poverty increased the risks of violence and crimes for U.S. households. Um, uh, wait, do we have a yuck? Do we got we got a chud? Uh oh. Oh, poverty is caused by bad decisions and lack of a adaption. That's not at all the case. Um, urban poverty increases the risk of violence and crime for U.S. households, but did not change the racial risk factors. Whites are at the most risk in an urban poverty household to experience crime, the rate of 5.64%. Um, black African Americans is the second highest level risk. See? Uh, when looking at the overall correlation between poverty and crime, there is some facts that jump out. For example, when someone receives more education, they are less likely to commit a crime and more likely to earn a living wage. We should invest in education. Education is a public right, and we should have that right. On the other end of the spectrum, it also is that urban white households in poverty are more at risk than any other group when it comes to experiencing crime. Uh, this, is a, this is probably a shift in what may, many tend to think about when they picture crime in the United States. Yet when it comes to violent crime, which is uh, most likely to occur from a poverty standpoint, 
There are fewer victims of violent crimes in the U.S. than people who died from accidental poisoning. Uh, more people died from accidental falls than from violent crime. I mean, this makes sense. Most, I mean, everyone's capable of falling. Um, accidental poisoning is interesting. Um, so this flies in the face of the right-wing narrative, of course, that uh, uh, crime is just like, ah, there's criminals everywhere. You know what I mean? Uh, and if you take violent crime from a purely white perspective, more white people are killed by accidental drownings than they are from black on white violent crimes. Black people aren't out here killing white people. Um, what does this mean? There's some direct correlation between socioeconomic status in the United States and experiencing a risk of violent crime. Is there a correlation between crime and youth living in poverty? Uh, I mean, we can keep going through this stuff. Um, uh, but, I mean, I think we get the point at this point. You know what I mean? That is big. I'm discriminating against when racists. You're right. I was developing my thinking. One of the first things I ever asked myself, this, this goes back as far as high school. Whenever I would hear anything, I would immediately ask myself, does that make sense? Isn't Dennis Prager religious? Dennis Prager religion. <sighs> He's religious. Dun, 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 dun. Does this make sense? No, it doesn't fucking make sense. You're religious. Trash. Trash. <laughs> He graduated with a major in history and Middle Eastern studies. Oh, Jesus. They were modern Orthodox Jews. Uh-oh. Can't be that. Also, if you're going to be... If you are here illegally, you don't go to the cops because you'll be deported, of course. Yeah. Um... He left academia without finishing a graduate degree. Uh, he left modern orthodoxy, but maintained many traditional Jewish practices. He remained religious. Yeah, he's religious. That was the, like, it was like, it's a built-in question since I was a child. Does that make sense? That's why I'm a big believer in using reason. That's why my Bible commentary is called the Rational Bible. I use reason to explain the Bible. That's why, if, if, even if you have no faith, I think it'll be hopefully one of the most important books you'll ever read. Because it's got, there's so much wisdom in the Bible, even if you're not a believer. But I, I, I think something ah! has to make sense. He said the Bible's filled with wisdom. Okay, this man's coming for my whole career. I, I really do. And so I remember hearing poverty causes crime when I was a kid. Dennis, Dennis's grandparents were very poor. That's a good-ass topic. Good job. And so what was? I remember the first thing I thought. I thought of my father's parents, immigrants to the United States from Russia, okay. uh, Russia, Poland, and... Uh, they were very poor. Essentially, my father supported them. My grandfather, whom I, I, I never knew, uh, he died when I was two, unfortunately. I knew my other grandparents, the other three. He was a tailor. Tailors don't make a lot of money to begin with, but he was a tailor during the Depression. <laughs> so he, he made he was unemployed. Uh, so my, my father's mother, I don't know if, if she worked for money. I know she did a lot of volunteer work. Anyway, they were very poor. And okay. the first thing I... This is on one and a half speech. I'm going to turn it up. He's talking so slowly. Holy shit. Like, that is actually... I don't care about any of this. I think that dog is dead. I hope not. I love him deeply. ...thought of when I heard poverty causes crime. Now, remember, when people say poverty causes crime, they're referring to violent crime. Everybody understands that if you don't have bread, you'll steal bread. And everybody understands that that's acceptable. No one thinks it is, it is moral to starve to death if, if you have access to, to uh, bread. No one thinks it's moral to starve to death if you have access to bread, then why are you okay with poor people dying? What are you talking about? What? Why do you keep telling poor people to bootstraps? They don't have any boots or straps. Why do you tell them to bootstraps then? What do you do? <laughs> Good call, baby. Jesus baby. Christ. Good call. You're just, you just said that you're immoral. Okay. Carcan, thanks, thanks for the tier one sub for seven months. I love you too. I love you too.
that, that I mean, the, the very fact that society is letting you starve to death. You can't survive off bread. Actually, you can survive for quite a long time on bread um, because of what's inside of it. How long can you survive on just bread? Uh, 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 I don't know how long, but, uh, yeah, you can do it. Just not, you know, you should, you, 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 you should do stuff. Um, it's, it also depends on what kind of oats you're using and stuff. Uh, you should watch, um, oh, what, salt, fat, acid, heat. Is that what it is? What is it called? Cooked, maybe? The Netflix. Netflix cooked. Is it cooked? Netflix cooked. Is that the one? Is that the one? Yeah, you should watch Cooked on Netflix. It's great. What a great one. What a great one. The compost. Fuck. Commie scum. Means that there is some corruption involved. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about uh, murder and rape and, and beatings and muggings and, and uh, bank robbery. I mean, okay, that's what I'm talking about. So I, the first thing I thought of was, well, if poverty causes crime, why can I not imagine my grandparents... Or particular oh no! Don't don't eat like Wonder Bread. You will die. Yes. At least it's mostly it's men involved in violence. It was inconceivable to me that this grandfather, though I didn't meet him, it was still inconceivable to me that he would hold up a bank or rape a woman or, or uh, uh, shoot somebody or what have you. It, it was it was inconceivable to me. Okay. And I then I so then I said to myself, well, why is it inconceivable to me, Dennis? Why is it inconceivable to you? And then I came up with the answer that has stayed with me since I came up with the answer in my own mind in high school because of his values. It is inconceivable that my grandfather would have, would have committed a, a violent crime. Because his values would, would not permit him to do so. And uh, probably not. Okay. I bet you could push anyone to to violent crime. Absolutely. Imagine if, for instance, um your father uh lived or your grandfather or whoever the fuck you were talking about. I can't remember which one it was. Um or your grandfather fought in World War II. No, nah, his grandfather fought in World War II? Probably his father. Um, <laughs> absolutely, they're capable of doing bad stuff. Imagine if, if for instance, someone like assaulted uh, your grandmother or, or denied, um, denied, you know, your, your grandmother care based on, you know, some demographic factor. You know what I mean? Um, like maybe she needed to go to the doctor and they're like, ah, no, no, he was Jewish, right? No Jewish people. You know what I mean? Which isn't terribly inconceivable. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if he could be capable of violence. He probably did at least get into one fight in his life. That's a violent crime. Then I, then I realized the obvious because it is obvious people who hurt people do so because of a values problem, not oh because of God. a financial problem. You don't think any situation has ever occurred where someone made a, 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 an immoral decision based on a financial need under capital? What are you fucking talking about? What do you think the fucking Iraq war is? You think that's a moral thing? What? I mean, that's a huge scale, too. Think about this. Like, you don't think anyone has ever robbed a bank for financial reasons? Are you out of your fucking mind? Am I taking crazy pills here, chat? Has, is, is this guy actually not fucking a member of, of human society? Is he, is, is, is he actually just fucking on, on like, I don't know, what, Elysium? In that one movie, Elysium, with, with uh, um, who's the guy, who's, who's fucking, I forget his name now. Who's the guy that always has to get rescued? Like, Saving Private Ryan? Saving Private Ryan. Past. Who's that fucking guy? Matt Damon? Matt Damon. Matt Damon always has to be rescued in like every fucking movie he's ever been in. Like in, in even in a metaphorical way. In the movie Elysium, which no one fucking watched. No one watched that movie. All the rich people were up on the fucking like on like a space station or something. Is this where this guy's beaming Prager fireside chats from? He's never actually engaged in human interaction before. This is like it. It's him and his dog and his fake fireplace and these books he's clearly never read. What's that one? I don't know what that one is. The notion that poverty causes crime 
yes. is based on the Marxist materialist view of life. That no, it's based on fucking statistics. What are you talking about? Poverty does cause crime. Poverty doesn't cause every crime. Poverty causes crime. There's a correlation, a strong correlation, implying str causation. I mean, you can't even give it causation because crime will not make someone do a thing, or poverty will not make someone do a thing. Poverty limits your ability to do things legally at a certain point. That's it. And then you make a decision after that. It has nothing to do with your values necessarily. There's the thought experiment like, like is it moral to, uh, uh, you know, what, what if you have a significant other, wife, husband, whatever, um, and you love them very much, or a child, whatever, whatever is the most em emotionally taxing for you, and they're sick, right? You have a sick loved one, the person you love most in this world right now. Think of that person, and they're sick. Okay, and in America, this is you know, this happens all the time, uh, and they can't get care because you financially can't do it. You can't afford medicine. You know personally the pharmacist on the end of the street. Okay, you also know that he's an asshole that charges too much for his medicine. Okay, you have two options: let your loved one die without the medicine, or steal that medicine and let them live. What's more moral, right? What's the most moral thing? Do you think it's moral for the guy to be scalping prices on, on much-needed medicine? No. Do you think it's moral for him to have all of that and hoard it for his own wealth? Maybe you do. Do you think it's moral to let your loved one die from a preventable disease that you could fix with just one dose of that medicine? I don't think that's very moral. So what do you do? Do you go and steal it? Let's say you know exactly how you could steal it. You know where he keeps his keys. You could get to the back when he's not working, and you could take it. Is that moral? Of course it's moral. To save a child's life? I think so. You could do the same thing with bread, like save a starving child. Same thing. Of course. So there, there are definitely cases in which, in which this happens. Poverty does cause crime because it, it incentivizes crime. Capitalism incentivizes poor people to both stay poor and commit crime. It does incentivize it. Ma materialist as in matter. That, that economics determines human behavior. That's, that is the essence of the left-wing worldview. Economics determines behavior. No, economics informs behavior. It doesn't determine it. I was very poor. I didn't commit any crimes. I mean, none that... You know, I sped and stuff like that. You know, little crimes that everybody does. I probably jaywalked several times. I didn't actually steal anything from the store, though. You know what I mean? So they're different. But I didn't get desperate enough. Had I been desperate enough, had I been really destitute, fuck yeah. I'll go to, I'll go to the store and steal some fucking food. I'm not too proud to do things to keep my family alive. What the fuck are you talking about? Not values. That's why if you actually, to this day, in America, and I'm sure in Europe, if you blame murderers, especially if they're a uh, minority, a uh, minority uh, in terms of race, ethnicity, if you blame them, then you are sort of uh, blaming the victim as if the murderer... No, 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 no. If you murder somebody, you fucking murdered them. You're a bad person. For the most part. Unless it was like, you know, self-defense or whatever. Um, which wouldn't necessarily be murder. I, it's homicide, but I don't know if we consider it. Is murder... Is that, is that, is that classified? As such? Like if we... Is self-defense murder? I mean, that's a terrible way to phrase that, but non-criminal, non-criminal homicide. Uh, a homicide may be considered justified if it is. Uh, okay, so murder is only when it's like non-justified, apparently. Um, murderer is the victim and not the murdered. But that's what you hear all the time. Oh, you're blaming the victim, but what are they a victim of? Oh, racism and and poverty. Okay, so if you're a victim of racism and poverty, it doesn't make it okay to just murder people. Why did they kill the person, right? So it totally depends. There's definitely justifiable violence in some cases, but like most of the time we're like, okay, bro, you fucking murdered somebody. Cease. You know what I mean? Like we're not here for that shit. Well, I don't, I don't understand that either. 
again, as a Jew, I thought about, well, the racism. Okay, well, the most enduring hatred in human history is anti-Semitism. If you want to read about it, I wrote a book on it called Why the Jews. It's in print. You can order it. Just just translated last week into Hungarian. And oh, for all the Hungarian fans out there, Dennis Prager has a book for you. Why the Jews? Oh, boy. And uh, this is the most enduring hatred in history. Jews went through the most systematic uh, oppression in the history of the world in the Holocaust. One Did Jews go through the most systematic oppression in the Holocaust? Granted, the Holocaust, obviously, and this is very brave of me to say, the Holocaust was bad. I feel like African-American chattel slavery was worse from a systemic oppression point of view. Um, I guess there's arguments to be made, but that endured for hundreds of years, whereas the systemic oppression of Jews by the, the Nazis, I was going to say the Hitlers, was like 10 years, and it was really bad, and there was millions. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably a wash, but like to claim supremacy on the oppression Olympics here, um, because of course he fucking did. I don't think you get to claim it. I think you just say it was really bad and everybody agrees. But if you if you start to say like that was the worst, uh, pretty Godwin's law, pretty Godwin's law. Like, specifically because he said systematically, right? Is why I'm like, I don't know. A lot of every three Jews in Europe was sent uh, to, be, to be murdered, including babies. There, there, was, there have been other horrors, believe me. I document all these other horrors. I have a whole video on, on why, we, why don't we hate communism as much as Nazism. But there, there was something unique about a modern, industrialized society okay. taking people from their homes and shipping them to death. Uh, it's, we, we really don't have uh, quite such a parallel. Uh, anything... Quite oh, like that. because it was the industrialized part that made it different. Mm, I guess. I suppose. Not really. Yeah, Nazis took a lot of inspiration from the U.S. Yeah. That industrialized murder. The industrialized and part. So I was thinking, is, well, if oppression, well, racism, slavery and, uh, didn't happen during the industrialized causes United you to commit crimes. Why didn't Jews go around murdering people <laughs> after the Holocaust? Why didn't Jews go around murdering after the Holocaust? Well. Most, what? Most of the, okay, a lot of Nazis were dead. Definitely that happened. Definitely that happened. Nazis got killed, for sure. Ex-Nazis definitely got killed. The Nuremberg trials happened, and they were prosecuted by a Jew. Granted, that was a moral action, but, I mean, definitely, definitely this happened. What are you talking about? I mean, that was, that's the most obvious example. I mean, they, they didn't even, Jews didn't even go around shooting Germans. Once the Holocaust ended, and then the answer is they have values. You, you don't you don't murder. It, it, the fact that you were oppressed doesn't give you an excuse to be a bad person. Wait, do you think killing Nazis makes you a bad person? What? And I don't mean like today's Nazis. I mean like literal, actual, not actionable Nazis, like SS members, the Luftwaffe. Like what? <laughs> no, the. Oh, Jesus. Any more than, than your financial state. But here it is. This is today's New York Times. Where did I put that sheet? Yeah, this is today's New York Times in an article, <coughs> in a throwaway line. That's the beauty of it. This is not an opinion piece. It's a news piece. It happened on the outskirts of Paris where poor social conditions have often led to crimes. That's it. Poor social conditions. The writer of this piece undoubtedly went to college, went to university, overwhelmingly went to graduate school. That's what you learn. Now, imagine if, can you imagine it wouldn't have even been printed in the New York Times on the outskirts of Paris where lousy values have often led to crimes? <laughs> can you imagine that? The, the editor would have said, what, what are you, nuts? What, what, what are you, right wing? <sighs> I like that he think he's... <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's something about it, right? You just look at his little chubby face. And he's like, I'm being funny! <laughs> look at that! I love That's what the... What, what is this? Why did he do this? Why is why is his tongue always out? I'm being funny. I don't know. It's like a. It's like a. It's not very kawaii. Okay. Not very uwu. Is it owo? Oh, I don't know. I don't know your weeb shit, chat. Jake, I have a serious question. Do people actually believe this? 
Yes, people actually believe this. PragerU is not a joke. What are you talking about? PragerU is a fucking... Look at this. They have 2.3 million subscribers. Look at this fucking guy. Crime is caused by moral poverty. Jesus fucking Christ. Rather be free and poor than rich and unfree. Crime is caused by poor parenting, lack of moral... What are you talking about? Do you live in a bubble? Dude, these are people that exist. We, you gotta know about them. For the New York Times would have written if the guy had written the truth. Where people with crappy values hurt other people. <laughs> That's what it's about. It, it, it's astonishing to me that that is controversial. That values determine the way you treat people, not your financial state. It's... It's, it's baseless. The assumption is baseless. And as I wrote, uh, with regard to poverty causes crime specifically, crime causes poverty. Where there is a lot of crime, you get poverty. Give each of those people in those, in those crime areas, give those people a bunch of money and see if how much crime happens. It's, it's not. Honestly, you give people you give people access to education, health care, and and good paying jobs. It like goes away, not fully. There's aspects of it, but yeah. New setup is looking fresh. Subway for hey, thanks. I appreciate the fifty biddies. So stupid. Where there's a lot of lung cancer, you get smokers. Absolutely. This is just so fucking stupid. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't even know how to describe this other than... I don't know. It's like... People, people tackle people, not football players. It just so happens that all the tackling happens where the football also occurs. What? It's so fucking stupid. That's the way it works. And where people work hard and don't commit crimes, that community rises above poverty. What are you talking about? You think... <laughs> Love the new setup. Thanks, Nasty Trumpet. Have yourself another cobby. Do you think that... Do you think there's no hardworking fucking poor people or what? Like, what the fuck? Papa Jake's Owo Guide to Michigan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is so fucking backwards. So backwards. They leave poverty. That's it. Act decently. Treat your fellow human being honestly and decently. Get married before you have a child. Go to work. <laughs> do an honest day's work. You will leave poverty. It is a guarantor. It's a guarantor. Do an honest day's work. Get married before you have a kid. And have values. No poor person has done any of those. I don't know any poor people that do an honest day's work. What the fuck are you talking about? This is the most privileged white bullshit I've ever heard. This is all dog whistles for racism, by the way. It also it implies that like black people don't have the same values because black crime happens more. It doesn't. It doesn't. We looked at the statistics already, right? So it's fucking stupid. Working three jobs is not hard enough. It's not honest enough, that's for sure. I have a Christian friend over and laughing his ass off at Jake. Why? Why are you laughing at me, Christian friend? Silly Jake. Joe Biden taught me that black equals poor. Oh, boy. Yeah, he did. Yikes. Joe Biden's a bag of shit. Oh, boy. Crime causes poverty. <laughs> Golfers tend to be rich, so if you want more money, it's, just take it's, up golf. It's aggravating that the Yikes. antithesis of truth is told as truth at the universities of the Western world. Why do these people, I don't know what neighborhood that is, I have no idea, I don't know what it is ethnically, I don't, I don't care. Uh, I don't care if it's white, I don't care if it's, if it's Muslim, I don't care whatever it is. <laughs> whatever I just said is true. Whatever I just said is true. <laughs> okay, buddy. Whatever I said is true. What the fuck is wrong with you? This is, this is some fucking Dunning-Kruger shit, man. Jesus Christ. And yes, crime does cause poverty. Uh, an obvious reason, people don't want to open stores where there's a lot of crime. You don't open stores, you're not going to have a thriving community. Hey, people also don't want to open stores where nobody has any fucking money. Those are the same places. 
Where people don't have money, you tend to see higher crime. He thinks your commentary is great and that you're funny. He's a weird guy. He is a weird guy. Hey, Elias in Wonderland's friend. Stop being a Christian. It ain't real. There. Now I've alienated him. He hates me now. Success. Right. Would you open a store in a, in a crime-ridden community? No. So the community gets even poorer. Because, but what if tomorrow every criminal in, in, a, in, a, in a bad section of America uh, or any country, they say, you know what? Uh, we watched a lot of PragerU videos and uh, we read the Bible and we decided that uh, we're going to try to be good people. We watch a lot of PragerU videos and we read the Bible and now we're going to be good people. Fuck. Oh, God. Eat a dick. A honey 42 uh, with 110 biddies. Where's the Bible? Uh, where there's a Bible, there's a Hugo and Jake. Conclusion, uh, never get rid of the Bible. Also true. Don't get rid of it. The place would delete poverty in 10 years. Businesses would move in, banks would open. It'd be a different world. You think PragerU videos and reading the Bible is gonna, is gonna teach you to be a fucking good person? Let's read the Bible real quick. Okay? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Alright, let's read some Bible. Chat, you wanna do a little Bible study? Want to do a little Bible study time? Let's read it together, okay? Here's some Bible study, okay? Here's the good guy. The Levite is the good guy. The Levite, who had lived in a remote area in the hill country of Ephraim, took a concubine from Bethlehem and Judah, but she was unfaithful to him. She left him and went back to her parents' home in Bethlehem, Judah. <laughs> After she had been there four months, her husband went to her to persuade her to return. He had with him his servant and two donkeys. She took him into her parents' home, and when her father saw him, he gladly welcomed him. His father-in-law, the woman's father, prevailed on him to stay, so he remained with him three days, eating and drinking and sleeping there. On the fourth day, they got up early and prepared to leave. But the woman's father said to his son-in-law, Refresh yourself with something to eat, then you can go. So the two of them sat down to eat and drink together. Afterward, the woman's father said, Please stay tonight and enjoy yourself. And when the man got up to go, his father-in-law persuaded him. So he stayed there... That night, on the morning of the fifth day, when he rose, the woman's father said, Refresh yourself. Wait till afternoon. So the two of them ate together. Um, there's a little bit of a hospitality gospel in here. And you may notice, if you didn't catch this Bible study back in the day, you may notice some similarities with uh, a very familiar story of the Bible. But hang in there. Then, when the man, with his concubine and his servant, got up to leave, his father and all the woman's father said, Now look, it's almost evening. Spend the night. The day is nearly over. Stay and enjoy yourself early tomorrow morning. You can get up and be on your way home. But, unwilling to stay another night, the man left and went towards Jebus, that is Jerusalem, with his two-saddled donkey and his concubine. When they were near Jebus, and the day was almost gone, the servant said to his master, Come, let's stop at the city of the Jebusites and spend the night. His master replied, no, we won't go into the city whose people are not Israelites. We will go into Gibeah. He added, come, let's try to reach Gibeah or Ramah and spend the night in one of those places. So they went on, and the sun set as they neared Gibeah and Benjamin. There they stopped to spend the night, and they went and sat in the city square. But no one took them in for the night. This is where it gets pretty, pretty common, okay? You, you might be, under, you might be feel, thinking to yourself, Jake, have I read this before? Yes. That evening, the old man from the hill country of Ephraim, who was living in Gibeah, the inhabitants of the place were Benjamites, came in from his work in the fields. When he looked and saw the traveler in the city square, he asked the old man, what are you, Where are you going? Where did you come from? He answered, We are on our way from Bethlehem in Judah to a remote area in the hill country of Ephraim where I live. I have been to Bethlehem in Judah, and now I am going to the house of the Lord. No one has been taken... No one has taken me in for the night. We have both straw and fodder for our donkeys and bread and wine for ourselves, your servants." Me, the woman, and the young man with us. We don't need anything. You're welcome to my house, the old man said. Let me supply whatever you need, only don't spend the night in the square. So he took him into the house and fed his donkeys. After they had washed their feet, they had something to eat and drink. Shit's about to get fucking wild, okay? When they were enjoying themselves, some of the wicked men of the city surrounded the house, pounding on the door. They shouted to the old man who owned the house, Bring out the man who came to your house! so we can have sex with him. The owner of the house went outside and said to them, No, my friends, don't be so vile. Since this man is my guest, don't do this outrageous thing. Look, here is my virgin daughter and his concubine. I will bring them out to you now, and you can use them and do to them whatever you wish. But as for this man, don't do such an outrageous thing. These are the good guys. This is the Bible. 
These are the good guys offering up his daughter and this dude's concubine to gang rape. But the men would not listen to him. So the man took his concubine and sent her outside to them. And they raped her and abused her throughout the night. And at dawn, they let her go. At daybreak, the woman, the woman went back to the house where her master was staying, fell down at the door, and lay there until daylight. When her master got up in the morning and opened the door of the house and stepped out to continue on his way, there lay his concubine, fallen in the doorway of the house with her hands on the threshold. By the way, apparently he slept like a fucking baby while she was being gang raped. He said to her, get up, let's go. But there was no answer. Then the man put her on his donkey and set out for home. When he reached home, he took a knife and cut up his concubine limb by limb into twelve parts and sent them into all the areas of Israel. Everyone who saw it was saying to one another, Such a thing has never been seen or done, not since the day the Israelites came up out of Egypt. Just imagine, we must do something, so speak up. If you continue on, they're not talking about cutting her limb by limb, sending her into twelve parts of the states of Israel. The thing that they need to stop, the thing they need to do something about, the thing they need to speak up about is the behavior of the people in the town. Not the guy offering his wife, his daughter, up to gang rape and then cutting her into pieces. That's the good guy. Just saying. Read your Bible, kids. But uh, this is what they believe at the New York Times. The well-educated secular believe nonsense. Truly nonsense. And I knew it in high school because I knew my grandparents would never mug, never rape, never murder, etc. I just knew it. And they were poor. Okay. What are your questions? Because they read the Bible. Okay. Is G-Man still fuming? Oh, yeah. All right. First one. Is this our, is this our first from Mozambique? Good. Milton, 21 years old, Maputo, Mozambique. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Milton. You know, I got to say, it, it's somewhat of a, of a high still. I don't, it's, a, it's a gift of, of my nature from either God or genes. I never lose getting excited. I'm never jaded. I don't have a jaded bone in my body. To sit here in my home and talk to people in Mozambique and Jamaica and France and Serbia and Uruguay and Australia and, and uh, for that matter, five, five streets from me is, uh, is, is, a, is a wonderful thing. It's, it's a blessing, and, I, and I, I really do appreciate it. This guy is just blown away by the fucking internet, dude. Just blown the fuck away. Hi, Dennis. Considering countries like Singapore and China that are thriving economically but have political systems that are far from the democracy of the U.S., wouldn't you agree that a good dictatorship with its leaders doing well and leading their countries is better than a bad democracy where people can uh, choose poorly the fate of their own countries? Thanks for taking my question. Mm. Well, this is a very uh, age-old question, Milton. Uh, is a benevolent democracy better than an inefficient democracy? No, no, no. B a benevolent dictatorship, Dennis. I know it's hard, but uh, benevolent dictatorship... Is it, is I, did I say benevolent democracy? No, benevolent dictatorship. There you go. Is a benevolent dictatorship better than a poorly functioning democracy? It can be. If you have a truly terrific uh, leader who is not democratic, then that could work for a period of time. Uh, the, I mean, to deny that is to deny reality. But uh, I'm opposed to it uh, because it's still not free. I don't only value the material. I value freedom. i rather be free and poor than rich and unfree. <laughs> it's like uh, all these years... Someone take all his money. Someone take... Uh, my friend came out of the bathroom. He says you should stop being an atheist. Did he read Judges 19 with us, Elias? Uh, <laughs> I, they, well, the left let's, let's, let's get rid of this guy's fucking money and see how much he enjoys being poor and free. Let's just see it. Like, literally, just take his money. How long do you think Dennis Prager lasts? Let's put him on one year of actual abject poverty in the United States. Put him in the deep south. No one can give him any money. He has to bootstrap himself. He has to get a job at fucking Walmart and make ends meet. Do you think he survives a year? Literally just survives a year. No health care. No dental. Nothing. He's already starting at a benefit, right? Because he's had all these things his whole life. Do you think he makes it? I think he doesn't make it at all. Are you kidding me? I really don't think he'd make it. Anybody who thinks I'd rather be poor and free is fucking dumb, okay? Because what he means is poor and free in the United States. Mm-mm. Bad. Bad. Not great to be poor, okay? Now, 
if we had an actual social system in which poor didn't mean literally dying in the fucking streets, but rather meant, you know, you have a very, very baseline care, housing, food, water. Okay, cool. Then, then yes, I would tend to agree. Poor and free? Sure. But this guy? Platitudes. He doesn't actually mean it. He would definitely rather be rich in a system of authoritarianism than poor in a system of utter freedom. There's no way. It was extolling the human also, being poor isn't free. Good, good idea. Uh, that's, a, that's a good point, Julia Boone. You're literally a slave to the fucking market. Pollution. And one of the things that they... Look at that doggo! He can't control his tongue! I love him! Shut up, Dennis. Sight. Oh, yeah, well, Castro, it's true, it's not, a, it's not a free country, but there's a 100% literacy rate. It's higher literacy rate than even in America. And I remember saying from the beginning, I'd rather be illiterate and free than literate and, and in a communist country. <laughs> where I can't read anything I want. Where all I can read are, you know, the works of Marx and Lenin and, and, and Castro. You would. I mean, you just wouldn't. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but this, this goes to my point. People don't value liberty. I've, I've said this now for years. I don't think... People value being taken care of. People value quality of life. Whoever says I'd rather be poor and free has never been poor. Also, chat, help me kidnap that dog. Don't kidnap dogs. But I mean, like, maybe buy it. More than they value freedom. Liberty is a value, not an instinct. Being taken care of. I bet he'd sell instinct. his dog if he got real poor. So, uh, yes, theoretically, the trains could run on time and, you know, some business thrive. I mean, communist China is a better example than Singapore. Singapore is a lot freer than, uh, than communist China. There's no comparison. But, uh, yes... Uh, uh, by the way, over the long run, it's not going to work. Even the economy of China is not going to work. And, and it's rooted in so much corruption, both in China and internationally. Uh, I, I am not optimistic for China. Yeah, and ne fucking the, the United States isn't rooted in any any fucking corruption, buddy. Seriously? Uh. And the events of Hong Kong, which I, I ought to talk to, to, or address one of these at times. It's very, very important. But uh, that's the answer. Look, Churchill said it. Churchill uh, said it. It's a very famous quote. What is it? The democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others. That's true. And by the way, democracy can, in fact, create the seeds of its own destruction. And I'll tell you one, one reason, and this is what I fear for the United States. The libs. Uh, this is another quote. I don't know. It's not Churchill, but I don't, I don't remember who it is. But I'm, I'm not getting it right, but this is, I'm paraphrasing. The libs are going to ruin it. The day people, somebody said this a long time ago, the day people realize that they can vote into power people who will give them money, that is the end of society. That's what's happening in the United States. And, and to a certain extent in, in Europe, certainly. That's, I'll never forget when George W. Bush was running for president. He had a public forum. It was on television. I was watching it. Some woman got up. And she said, uh, Mr. Bush, hmm. if you're elected, what will you do for me? And, and it was so painful, that question. First of all, I realized, boy, had America deteriorated. I was a little boy when John Kennedy was elected, and, and I remember him saying the famous words, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And everybody thought it was a great line. Not now. Now it's ask what your country can do for you. I think that was always a shitty line. I don't like that. Ask what you can do for your country. No. What? The country only exists if we are here the country <laughs> the reason you set up a state is to serve the broader society okay the state is at the service of the people not the people at the service of the state it doesn't make sense to run it that way what's the point to serve the state what Explain to me what virtue the state has over people. I don't think you can argue for it. I genuinely don't think so. Because every time you prescribe anything towards the state, you're really just describing the people, right? Well, well, see, see uh, uh, the United States stands for freedom. Only if the people stand for it. If the people want to vote in an authoritarian that will reduce freedom, then the state doesn't represent that at all, does it? Well, 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 the, the, the state stands for values. We're locking brown people in cages. I think maybe our values are a little fucked up. The woman had no shame. By the way, I thought, because I always think this, how would I answer if I were running for office? So I remember at the time thinking, this is what I would say. Ma'am, nothing. I will do nothing for you. I will do a great deal for America, but I will do nothing for you. I know I lost your vote, but I need you to know where I stand. That's what I would say. I think a lot of, of people would appreciate that, but a lot of people wouldn't. So uh, democracy is a real problem because that's what, that's what the left is. Vote for us, we'll give you money. It's as simple as that. Give you more and more and more and more and more benefits. What was I just... You're rich! You just got a tax cut from the guy that you voted for! 
You voted for him to get the tax cut! What? Does that poor dog have to smell this guy's farts? Is that why he's moving every so often? I don't know. Does he have farts? Does he look farty to you guys? Thanks for the hundred biddies. This reading was, is it, is it uh, Atlanta? I don't remember which city. They now give all kids in school breakfast and lunch. And I am totally opposed to that. Totally. You're against giving children food at school? How can you be against giving people food at school? Children. Children. They're children, Dennis. How can you be opposed to giving children fucking food at school? Studies show that when children have full bellies, they learn! And when they have empty stomachs, when they're fucking hungry, they don't learn! Do you want capitalism to succeed or not? If you have people failing education, you're gonna have a bunch of unskilled workers that you have to fucking financially support with your taxes that will need welfare because you are unwilling to fucking feed them fucking Lunchables when they were going to fucking school, you idiot! <sighs> Roger Masters, thanks for the 50 biddies. <laughs> Fuck's sake. At least the Democrats aren't lying about giving us money. That's true. That's fucking true. Parents have to give their children food. If a parent can't feed their child, then we have to figure out why. Because the system makes it so that they can't afford. Due to the fact that we don't regulate things like rent enough and we don't raise wages so that they can keep up with the market that you like, that's why they can't feed their children. What? Pseudosapien, fuck this slab of electrified goiter. Have a sandwich. I'm going to bed. Hey, I love you deeply. Have a good night. Maybe they're very ill and they need to be helped. Maybe they're on drugs, in which case the kids might have to be raised. Maybe they're ill and need help. Maybe they should have access to health care without having to go bankrupt, Dennis. Space King Dave subscribed at tier one. Balthazar subscribed at tier one. And Vertigo Rose all subscribed at tier one. All of you did so independently. I appreciate you. Did I say a thing that made you go, I'm going to throw money at Jake? I like it. Do it again. Good call, baby. I appreciate you. Thanks so much. Good call. Like, what the f- Yeah, take the kids. Yeah. There you go. Based elsewhere. I don't know why, but that is a rather basic parental obligation to feed your own children. It is not the same. <sighs> but you send them to public school. <sighs> we should be providing- We should be providing fucking food to children that go to public school. We should just be doing it. What the fuck are you talking about? If you want a, a solid society with good morals and values and shit, wouldn't it be better if you were teaching those morals and values to people that weren't fucking hangry all the time? They already have fucking hormones bouncing off the walls. They have incredible social pressure. If they're poor and their parents can't afford them to eat, they might be only getting one to two meals a day, like assuming their, their school even, even serves breakfast, but if they don't, they're getting lunch once a day, and then maybe every other day they get fucking fed at home. Are you kidding me? This comes from such fucking privilege. I taught in a school where a lot of the kids were fucking poor. There was like middle class was your was your upper class of that school, right? And they don't and and, and they don't uh, teach people to use birth control proactively to avoid the situation in the first place. This is fucking maddening. I agree, Roger Masters. And so I have kids in my classroom. I'm trying to teach them fucking like you know, the French Revolution and trying to tell them about, you know, the different caste systems and the bourgeoisie and why the French Revolution even happened and, at all. Thinking like you do, Dennis, is the answer. Um, and they're fucking hungry. They're not going to be able to listen to me. They're not going to be able to focus. They're going to be thinking about how to fucking eat. What are you talking about? This is not, from an educational standpoint, if you want a solid foundation for your capitalist system that you say is a good thing, you should be feeding, educating, and, and, and healing anyone that's sick. Like, that's what we should be doing. We should be proactive about it, not reactive. 
None of my schools served breakfast and it started so early that nobody ever had time to eat breakfast. Everybody was dead in class every single day. Um, my school served breakfast. Um, you had to show up early. They would have breakfast available. Um, they also had um, a, a snack cart that went around to each classroom. Um, everything on there was a dollar. Um, and that was to fundraise um, uh, stuff for the school. Um, and we also had uh, lunch. And we have vending machines all over. Um, but in my school, we, we had a very small town. So if someone didn't have money, most of the kids would help each other out. Um, but you could go into debt with the school uh, and they would give you lunch. Like my, Luckily, my school was pretty cool about that kind of shit. This is fucking bullshit, though. Society's obligation to feed your children. It is yours. And you can feed your children for really, really cheap, uh, uh, for very little money. It is, not, it is incredible how cheap food is in the United States. People laugh at it, but you can, in fact, eat healthfully at McDonald's for very little money. Don't get a Big Mac. Get, get, uh, get, get grilled chicken and don't eat the bun. You'll be doing fine. Get grilled chicken and don't eat the bun at McDonald's. What? How much is a grilled chicken sandwich? McDonald's prices. McDonald's prices. I don't know. McDonald's menu prices. What's the average? I don't know. I don't know what the fucking... I don't know what you pay. So, uh... This is the estimated prices. An artisan grilled chicken sandwich. This is the only grilled chicken sandwich, right? $4.39 for an artisan grilled chicken sandwich. Or, because you can eat healthy there, or if I have children, I can get four... McChickens for cheaper than that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So I can get, I can get a, a the 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 McChickens are are call, a dollar dude. wherever they are. They're a dollar twenty nine. Barbecue ranch burger, cheeseburger. I could get these for fucking a dollar instead of one of these for four. What are you talking about? This guy is so fucking out of touch, Mister Scaramanga. With a nine total months. Thank you very much for the resub. I appreciate it. I feel like I'm saying your name all the time in regards to resubbing. But apparently, um, apparently it's only like once a month. Why are your American prices so cheap? Uh, we're better than you. Get the burger. Don't I'm, I'm kidding. I will, I will take your health care. Don't get the bun. Don't, don't get it stacked high up with, uh, with mayonnaise and stuff. And it's really inexpensive. If you can't afford uh, a few dollars per meal, something is awry. We got to figure out what it is, but the, the school should not be doing it. What if you can't afford a few dollars per meal, okay. Oh, fucking K. Let's go into it. Let's, let's do some math. Chat, are you ready to do some math? I'm going to get the fucking calculator out. Oh, boy. We're going to do calculator, okay? Let's assume, let's assume, for instance, okay? Minimum wage U.S. Okay, minimum wage, $7.25. Okay, let's assume $7.25 times 40, $290 every two fucking weeks. This is before taxes. Times two, of course. So for a month, you're working on 580, okay? $580. Let's say there's two of you. You're in a, you're, you, maybe you have kids because you're sending them to school. So let's say you have two people in the household, but you're just in abject poverty. This is, uh, this, is, this is your minimum wage that you like. You actually you probably don't like it, but this is the minimum wage for the federal minimum wage, okay? Most states abide by this, okay? And let's say they're working 40 hours a week, okay? So let's do times two, okay? So $1,160. Sam the Nanner Man, thanks for the 12, or th thanks for the tier one sub, not the 12 months. You haven't been here long enough. This is your first month. I appreciate it, Sam. Have a cobby. Uh, actually, was that a Hugo? You earned a baby Hugo. Look at him. He's so cute. We still smooch him. I think I got him. Did I get him? I gotta send him to bed, okay? Send baby Hugo to bed. Okay, so. You have two people, parents, working exactly 40 hours, okay? They're bootstrapping the fuck out of this, all right? Sure, they could make extra, but let's assume, let's assume that they make this. And this is before taxes, okay? Because taxation is theft to Dennis Prager, of course. Okay? So, $1,160. This is a month. Let's put this 
Let's put this. Wait, can I put you right here? I'll put you right there. You big boy. Big big boy over here. Oh, I gotta be a little more careful now because I have feathers in the middle. Okay, so big, big number here, okay? All right. Average rent per month US. US housing rents hit record high average of fourteen oh five a month. Okay. Well, Minus fourteen oh five equals well we're now we're negative two hundred and forty five dollars. Hmm. That's just rent. Well, we can't do that. So we can't live there. Okay, so now we're, where's the cheapest rent? The cheapest rent. Toledo, Ohio is the least expensive city. Let's say we live in Toledo, Ohio, okay? Five fifty per month. Okay, let's do that. Plus fourteen oh five. Okay. Now we're gonna go minus five fifty. We live in a we live in Toledo, Ohio. We're a two parent household with one child in Toledo, Ohio, working forty hours a week for minimum wage. Okay. This is the cheapest rent in the country. We are now at six hundred and ten dollars. Okay. Cheapest rent. Okay. So. Average, we need, at least one person needs a cell phone. Cell phone bill. Average cell phone bill. Average monthly cell phone bill is $73. I pay $35. Let's, let's say, let's say they, they have Virgin Mobile and they pay $35 a month. I pay $35 a month. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. Daddy loves you so much. Thanks for, po thanks for following. Um, I think it's a lie, though. I haven't seen him in, in many years. You forgot income, income tax and SSI? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, Jake, it was 2200 for two people working two jobs. Was it? $575. Remember $575. Okay. Let's do this again, just in case. Okay. 7.25 times 40 equals 290 times 2 equals 580 times two. No, it's, it's 11, it's 1160. Right? No, no, times two. You're right, 2320. Okay, so 550 minus 550. Okay, and they, we, we say they both have cell phones. We live in 2019 minus 70. Okay, this is before tax. Okay. Okay. Um, um, oh, av average internet, average, because you need average internet bill, average internet bill, 54.92, less than Americans, the average internet bill, 66.17, okay, minus, we'll just do 66 equals, okay, okay, we do need a car, average, we'll have one single car, well, can we even have a single car? The average monthly car loan payment in the U.S. was five thirty for new vehicles and three eighty one for used ones. Let's say three eighty one. Okay, so do they share a car because they live in Toledo, Ohio? <sighs> I'm gonna assume you need two. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Minus three eighty one equals minus three eighty one. That's two vehicles. Okay. Average, we need electricity. Average electricity bill. Uh, in 2017, the average residential electric bill was 111. Okay, so minus 111. Okay, now we're at 761. Okay, average, here's the big one. Average food bill for family of three. A grocery budget on a thrifty food plan for young children. This is food for a family of three. That's thrifty. Four sixty-five. Sarah and I definitely spend more than that. Oof. That's that's real fucking thrifty. God damn. That is real thrifty. Oh and yeah, we do need car insurance. Oh, okay. Let's let's table that. Average car insurance 
Bill Toledo, Ohio. Uh, the average cost of auto insurance in Ohio is seven hundred two a year. Um, what's seven hundred two? Seven hundred two divided by twelve is fifty eight minus fifty eight. Fifty eight dollars. Oop, minus fifty eight because you got both of them. Okay. I mean, you, we're 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 starting to scrape together here. Okay, and I haven't gotten rid of the food yet. Okay, we're still at four sixty five. This is the cheapest. Let's just go with the cheapest. This is the thrifty. Average is 465 minus 465. Now you're down to 180. Average gas cost per month. For maintenance repairs, you should budget at least $500 a year or $42 a month. Okay, so let's do minus 84. That's roughly for maintenance and repairs. For gas, let's assume you drive 1,000 miles a month in your car, which is 23 miles. 117 per month. Wait, that's that's budget for repairs? Oh, wait, wait. Let's do plus 84. Poor people aren't getting repairs in their cars. Uh, minus, okay, we can't, we can't put gas in both these cars. We can't put gas in both of these cars. We've just run out of money. We did the thriftiest... I don't know how to squeeze it. I don't know how to squeeze it. This is just gas. We're not even to other stuff. Like, I didn't do a water bill. Average water bill per month. Uh, average family pays 70 a month for water, minus 70. I mean, we're working at a deficit now. It's uh, this... we d <sighs> Clothing? Jesus Christ. Um... Let's say you can go to Goodwill. I don't know, a good... Let's say you just shop at Goodwill because we're trying for the actually cheapest. Um, Goodwill, maybe for a growing kid. Kids go through clothes fast, man. Um, how often should you buy kids new clothes? I don't know. How often to buy clothes for your children? How much does it cost to clothe a child for a year? <whistles> this is for a year. Man. <laughs> I don't know how to I don't know how to squeeze this out, man. I don't know how to squeeze this out. This is them working full time jobs at your minimum wage. I just I, <laughs> So, so this is what I'm talking about, right? Th and, and this, these people, let's see, let's see. Um, what was it? What was the very, very tippy top? Uh, 2320, 2320 times 12 is 27,840. What's the... Poverty line uh, family of three. 27, eight. They're over the poverty line. You're over the poverty line if you work 40 hours a week with minimum wage. They don't qualify for help. <laughs> We went with the cheapest rent in the country. We went with the cheapest food budget that we could find on the internet. We went with the cheapest phone bill that I have. It wasn't the cheapest phone bill I Googled. It was just the phone bill that I have because it's cheap as fuck. They are over the poverty line. They don't qualify for assistance. We're at a negative. How are they going to feed their kid? How are they fucking going to feed their kid? The means of production are looking awfully seizable. Fuck's sake. I know a few ways to feed the kid. You know what looks really nutritious? This rich guy. I bet this rich guy could... 
What's the... Hold on. How many calories in a human body? How many calories? A horse? Wait. Ooh, there's 81,000 calories in a human body. What's... 81,000 divided by 2,000. So, Dennis Prager, and he's a big boy. Dennis Prager could sustain you and your children, your, well, your child on a 2,000 calorie diet for 40 straight days. I'm just saying, that could happen. He could sustain you. Well, guess I'll die. Yeah. And that's just, that's just an average person. Both me and Dennis Prager probably are a little more caloric than 81,000 total. Just saying. Okay, so we went through we went through how to fucking budget on a family of three on minimum wage, bootstrapping the fuck out of themselves. Betty tastes like veal. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's even worse in California, right? Because they have a they have a minimum wage of twelve, but like, what's the average rent in what's the average rent in California? Average rent, California. Average apartment rent in California is fourteen hundred dollars. Nine sixty times two. <laughs> right. I just don't think you, I just don't think you can do it, man. I, it's hard. What this does is it undermines parents. And that's terrible. All right. That was the democracy question. My rent in Sacramento is $1,800. Eric's blue. What the? F no, no wonder. No wonder you have a cheer badge of one. Keep your money. Oh, God. The fact that you're a subscriber, Eric's blue, is a, is a miracle. Good for you. Holy shit. Question. Jacob 20, Owings Mills, Maryland. Hi, Dennis. I'm a huge fan of your show. Thank you. And I hope it continues for a long time. Uh, that's the plan. My question is, do you have any opinions that are not rational? I don't think so. Do you have any opinions that aren't rational? You think crime causes poverty. <laughs> I, I have tastes that are completely irrational. Why I, I prefer, let's say, Thai food to, uh, to Chinese food. They're not that different. Well, they are different. How is that irrational? What? How is that irrational? Am I missing... Irrational definition. Am I missing it? Not logical or reasonable? It's very logical or unreasonable why you would like the taste of one thing over another. It's a chemical experience. What? That, that's, that's not... Clockwork God Complex. In lighter news, I got my first dress, so that's some good trans feels. Hey, congratulations, Clockwork God Complex. Cacau, Have, baby boo. I'm going to put some bicons uh, in, in chat and some... I don't have any. The tran train is not is not choo chewing yet. With some gay stuff, and we'll do an end. Call baby bird. Hey, slow dog, fifty two with five gifted subs to the community. Thank you so much, slow dog. Shark stew, Julia Boone, Deckard Kane. Deckard Kane. Uh, uh, uh. Was it? Was it? Maj, Maj, Tim Maz, Mighty Mouse, and a subtle hypnotic. Thanks. Thanks for that. Call, baby I appreciate it. Call. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 10, 11, 12, 13. I gave you two extra. I think I owe you one. Good call, baby bird. Hermeline! Thanks for the follow. I think I gave you way too many copies, to be honest, but that's fine. You guys deserve it, damn it. Slow dog. Free reduced lunch kid paying it forward with my IT away. money. Hey. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Pay it forward. Yeah. Free and reduced lunch, kid. Imagine. Look at you. You got lunches when you were growing up. You were able to eat. And now you, you took that education and you, and you put it towards IT. Beautiful. I appreciate you. It's not rational. I, I acknowledge. Of course not. There's a whole realm. Or, you know, why, why I prefer 
uh, this piece of music to that piece of music. I have a tremendous number of... He's irrational. Uh, okay, I'll use opinions. But on, on issues, I don't believe I have any that are not rational. That is why, if you can show me where I don't meet the criteria of reason, I may change my mind. Reason is not enough, however. People think that reason is enough, and therefore you don't need God. Or higher values. Reason reason is important. Reason is indispensable, but not sufficient. It is reasonable, if you, on, on a purely rational on purely rational grounds, it is reasonable not to spend a lot of money on, on 90 year olds who are sick. Just is. But they're but they're they're, they're infinitely way. valuable, a 90 year old human. Okay. Uh <laughs> Cronizzle, thanks for following. <laughs> so we spend Jesus the money. Jesus Christ. If we if we dropped all public assistance, the economy could be booming. Uh but it's not moral. There has to be some public assistance. By the way, every conservative knows that there has to be some public assistance. Could call, baby bird. Peepo Could Beepo call. just became a baby bird with tier one. My medical bill came to 316000 But my $5 a month here feels worth it still. Also, cancer gone. Hey, Peepo Beepo, congratulations on, the, on beating cancer, apparently. Uh, I didn't know. Nat 20s in chat for critical... Critically killing cancer. Congratulations, Peepo Beepo. 316000 but $5 a month feels worth it. Hey, if you can't afford it, please stop. But uh, I do appreciate you nonetheless. Um, it helps me afford things, for sure. So uh, that's dope as fuck. Very happy. I think the next charity we do should be Fuck Cancer. What do you think? Next charity we do, probably in December, should be Fuck Cancer. Dab on them. Cancer, the ultimate wheat. Absolutely. But we don't believe in free breakfast and lunches. We do believe in free breakfast and lunches. Marco, 20, Belgrade, Serbia. I was in Belgrade when it was Yugoslav. Wait, is fuck cancer an actual charity? Um, there's no reason you should have a, a, a bill that large. There just isn't. Oh, yeah. So stupid. Forward. When it's stuck in a rut, how do you climb out of it and pull yourself back together? It's a toughie. Uh... It's very easy to get into a rut. A rut is a bad habit. Is that fair to say? Is that more or less anonymous? Rut, I don't, does he mean emotional rut or rut of, of lousy behavior? I think he might mean it means emotional rut? Maybe. Okay. Well, this is what this is what I do when I get unhappy. And I wrote a book on happiness, so I, I, and I've lectured on it a lot. It's a very important subject. The first thing that I do, and I'm blessed, I'm essentially, I've, I've worked on it, and my nature is toward the happy. But whenever I've gotten unhappy, whenever I even just feel in a bad mood, I ask myself immediately, why am I in this rut? Why am I in this bad mood? Okay. And I will not rest until I figure out why. That. Okay. And before, don't be depressed, just bootstrap it. <laughs> then, I, eat, I have two choices. Do something about it, or accept that it is part of life, or and it's, I can't change it. The famous 12-step thing, you know, God give me the wisdom to distinguish between what I can change and what I can't change, and what I can't change, enable me to accept uh, but if you can't change it, first, you have to figure out why you're in a rut. That is, otherwise, there's no way out. Now, by the way, on some cases, it might be biochemical, and you will need, you know, an antidepressant, if that's what you're referring to. I, my original response was a rut is just a series of... Little cat! Thanks for the tier two subby. A baby. A baby bird. Thank you very much. And boom button with a tier one. Thanks for subscribing for seven months. By the way, it's still September. Half off tier one subbies. I'm just saying, we're trying real hard... We're trying real hard to get that last emote slot here, okay? Um, we're at 516 of 600. Uh, every single day, we have to make up more ground because they start over. But uh, what I'm thinking we're going to do is uh, do a real hard push where I might just stream like every single day uh, until we, we hit it. Recurring uh, destructive behavior. That, so I'll deal with it's that. It's almost over. Time. But number one is you must figure out why. And I'm a big behaviorist. If you start acting, a, if you start acting happy, you will be happier. If you start acting good, you will be happier. If you start, just act happy, five head. You fools. Have you considered just acting fucking happy? Hey, if you're not happy, just pretend you are, idiot. You fucking idiots. Holy shit. You guys are so stupid. Man, imagine being sad when you could just be happy instead. <laughs> Always thinking. Always thinking. Lomo Como, thanks for following. If you... I can't believe that people are happier watching a lot of video, whether it's video games or television or internet. Fun 
is good in small doses. <laughs> Fun is good in small doses. In big doses, it doesn't make people happier. <laughs> it's a very interesting thing. It's sort of like salt. A little salt on food is fantastic. A lot of salt on food is awful. So that's how I look at fun. I have other reviews on fun. It's in my book, Happiness is a Serious Problem. Does he ever not talk about books he's written? Jesus fucking Christ. Chad, 40, how are we doing on time? Good. It's 30? <laughs> okay. All right, well then, in light of that, I got so many good ones. I know I'll end up with this. Abdullah. Abdullah. Yeah, it's like Abdullah, I guess. Caligula salad. Fun is good in small doses. The rest of your life has to be endless misery. Facts. That's how we... 22, Damam, Saudi Arabia. Ahlan wa sahlan. Uh, hey, Mr. Dennis, I'm a Muslim person. Have you ever read the Holy Quran? Why or why not? Actually, you will be surprised to know I studied Islam and I studied Arabic. And while um, very slowly I could, I could read a well, clearly printed version of the Quran, or of Allah Ram for that matter, or, uh, I don't understand most of it, I admit it. My vocabulary never developed, but I, I did study for three years Arabic. And I, and I read uh, much, I didn't read all of the Quran. I read much of it. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a totally interesting question that you posed, because you probably want to know my reaction. I don't think he's just asking me to read it. Um, and I know that uh, a lot of Muslims believe that if a non-Muslim reads the Quran, they will almost inevitably become a Muslim. And I appreciate your love and reverence for the Quran. But uh, I don't assume that, well, you know, I, I have read the New Testament and I'm not a Christian. There are people who have read the Old Testament, they're not Jewish. Uh, people can deeply appreciate others' holy texts and not necessarily become a member of that religion. But I will tell you one thing that you'll find of interest. A woman called my radio show many, many years ago. And she, Why isn't Dennis a Muslim? She said, Big she said, I'm a Muslim. And I would like to know, why aren't you a Muslim? And I told her I really am touched that she would ask, because it means that she thinks I think these things through. And I was complimented by the question, actually. And this is the answer that I gave her. I said, I can answer you in a nutshell. He's a, he's a Jewish man. Islam in Arabic means submit to God. I'm a Jew. Israel, the name of my people, uh, religiously, I Israel means struggle with God. I rather struggle with God than submit to God. And she said, thank you. That was a good answer. She was very touched by it because it made sense to her, and and it makes it. it, it I, I would still stand by that uh, by that answer in, in many ways. Obviously, in the final analysis, I submit to God, but I spend a much of my time also struggling. Why is there so much suffering? Well, maybe I should talk about that once. It would be a good good topic. Anyway, I began with this issue of uh, of does poverty or bad values cause crime? It's a very it's a very big deal. So, uh, what can I remind you? All right, I don't care about Dennis. After this fact, that's enough, Dennis. That's enough, fucking Dennis. Okay. Just fucking terrible. What a bag of shit.